can't take our peace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it tonight, oh God. Oh, that we still have our joy. We still have our peace of mind. We're still in love with you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, hear our cry tonight. God, as we cry out from our spirit, oh God. God, for our country, God. For one another, the body of Christ, oh God. We see the enemy try to infiltrate God. He's trying to uh, bring forth his plot, his glory, and his plan, but it won't work, oh God. I thank you for power that supersedes anything that the devil brings in our life, God. I thank you that the church of God is prevailing and superseding all of the power of the devil in the name of Jesus. I thank you for victory over sin. I thank you for victory in the body of Christ. I thank you, oh God. Because you're worthy, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Oh God, the areas that we're weak in, the areas that we're struggling in, oh God. We lay it on the altar tonight, oh God. God, have your way in that situation. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Fix it like only you can, oh God. God, we cry out tonight, oh God. For our sisters and brothers, God, our family folks that don't have a relationship with you, oh God. Oh, we're praying, God, that you would intervene, oh God. God, however you say, though, however you get their attention, oh God, we say yes and amen, oh God. God, whatever situation that will bring them to their knees, oh God. Asking the question, what must I do to be saved, oh God? God, and I thank you. Oh, God, I'm here and our hearts cry tonight, Father God, I thank you. Oh, God, for ministries all over the world. Oh, God, it's a now, it's a season. God, to bring revival, God, to stir up our hearts, God, to bring us all together as one, oh, God. Laying down our differences, oh, God. Laying down the idols and the schisms and the division, oh, God. And God, pursuing you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul, God, crying out for our nation, crying out for one another that the word of God may go forth and accomplish that which it was sent out to do, God. And it shall not return, boy. I thank you, oh God, that the church of oh God will catch on fire once again, God. God, that revival will spring forth, oh God, all over this nation, all over the world, oh God. People are giving their lives and surrendering their lives to you, oh God. God, because we know that it is all about you, oh God. Oh God, no matter what the world is saying, and no matter what the world is doing, oh God. God, you got a remnant of believers who will not bow down, God. We will not turn away. We will not turn back, God. But we will pursue after you, oh God. Oh God. I thank you, oh God, because greater is waiting, God. God, we have an expectation that greater is coming, oh God. God, if we can endure till the end, God, build up our endurance, God. Build up our patience, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. God, help us to be willing, God, to fight the good fight of faith, oh God. Without wavering, without compromise, without giving in, oh God, that we will stand firm on the foundation, which is you, oh God, built up in you, oh God. Oh God, like that tree planted by the rivers of living water. We shall not be moved when trouble comes, God. When calamity comes our way, we shall not be moved. When trouble, bad news come our way, we shall not be moved, God. I thank you, O oh God, for your steadfast love, God. I thank you, O oh God. Your love never changes. Your love never gives up. Your love just keeps on giving, O oh God. Hallelujah, God. Even when we fall short, your love keeps giving, God. When we don't know where to turn, your love keeps on giving, God. And we hold on to it tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you tonight. I 
God, thank you for power, oh God, over all the power of the enemy, oh God. I thank you that you have given us the victory already, oh God. We don't have to contend for our victory. We fight from our place of victory, oh God. And I thank you, oh God, oh God, that we can lift up our voices in victory tonight, God. Victory over every area of our lives, God. Oh, God, that our lives may be open to you, oh, God. God, whatever way you want to turn us, we say, yes, Lord. Uh, God, have your way, yes, Lord. God, in the areas of our stumbling and our weaknesses, God, we say, God, have your way, God. We want the working of the Holy Ghost to strengthen us, God. In those areas that we haven't fully surrendered, God. In those areas where we need to come up, oh, God, we surrender that area to you tonight, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you for a spirit to do right, oh God. A spirit to walk up right before you, God. A spirit to live right before you, oh God. To cry out and spare not, not being the same, but the gospel, God. Wherever we go, oh God, that we thank you for it tonight. God, I thank you. Oh, God, for your faithfulness always, oh, God. God, in this hour, in this season, oh, God, God, I pray that every believer, oh, God, that our soul would set on fire again, God. God, that we would do our first work over, oh, God. God, we would lay complacency down, God. God, we would lay down our could have been, should have been, would have been, God. But, God, I thank you that you will put a fervency in us, God. The urgency of now in our spirit. Oh God, God, that we may see what you're saying, God. We may speak what you're speaking in this hour, oh God. Not having a form of knowledge and denying the power of uh, thereof, but God, we will walk in the fullness of source of faith, oh God. Knowing that you have our back, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Work on us, God. Work on us, God. Work on us, God. Work on my mind, oh God. God, when my mind begins to get wavered, oh God. Work on my mind. Work on my heart, oh God. Work on my spirit, man. I yield my spirit unto you, oh God. Hallelujah. Have your way in my life, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, every person here tonight, oh God. God, whatever we stand in the need of, God. God, I pray for miracles in their lives, God. I pray for supernatural encounters in their life, oh God. God, I thank you as we see it. things happening. We are seeing testimonies come forth, God. Being burst out in Jesus' name, God. We lift up a praise, God. We lift up a praise before you, oh God. Knowing that you're working behind the scenes, oh God. And while we're waiting, we're praising. And you, O oh God, for a favorable outcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because you are God. And God, you're concerned about everything that concerns us. And Father, we thank you. We pray for those that are watching. Oh God, the faithful supporters, O oh God. God, bless them right where they are, in their homes, in their lives, God, on the job, God, whatever they're standing in need of, God. God, help us, God, to support one another, oh God. God, whether it's a kind word, God, whether it's a kind text or message, oh God, but God, help us to strengthen one another and encourage one another in a day and time and assist, oh God. Father, as we go forth tonight, Father God, we ask that the Holy Spirit have His way, oh God. We make room for the Holy Ghost tonight, oh God. God, we make room, God. We make time for the Holy Ghost tonight, oh God. Shower down your blessings, oh God. Help us tonight, oh God. Like you, only you can, oh God. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is worthy, saints. Hallelujah. We can't afford to come in and act like we're not in church no more. We got to come in ready for God to move, to stir up uh, what's on the inside of us so, so that we can go back out in the hedges and the highways compelling men and women to come out to hell. Come on, somebody say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want God to use me. I want God to use me in this hour. I want God to use me in this last and evil day. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want to be a living testimony.
testimony for him. Um, some, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where are we? Hallelujah. Ninety first song. Come on, let's flow right into it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Thou art the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, they shall dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, so now we have come to the part of the service where it's time to give. Hallelujah. Amen. So our three ways to give are through Cash App with hashtag OICM through Zale, or you can mail it to our PO box, and all three ways to give are on your screen. Amen. So let's do a quick prayer over our offering. Dear God, we thank you. We praise you for the funds that you have given us, for all that you have bestowed upon us. And God, we give gratefully. We give back to you gratefully, Lord, just because of how generously you've given to us. And we don't take it lightly, Lord, because we know that you didn't have to do any of the things that you've done for us. So God, we stand here tonight just saying thank you for all that you've done. And even if we don't have a whole lot of money, if we don't have the amount in our account that we desire right now, we thank you that we have something. We thank you that we're not on the streets today, that we're not begging for anything. God, just thank you for being our provider, our Jehovah Jireh. And God, we just thank you and we praise you for just an all things. Amen. Amen. And so um, our only announcement thus far is just to make sure that if you have not yet done so, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Overcomers in Christ Ministry. So uh, like, share, and subscribe. Please and thank you. And also, um, we're going to be going on our stash July 5th through 18th, leading up to our fourth anniversary. Somebody say hallelujah. Four years strong. Amen. So, um, just gather yourselves accordingly. Try to start, you know, training your body now because Pastor John said he's not going to put any parameters on it. But just seek God uh, in regards to the type of fast that you're going to go on, okay? And maybe start preparing your heart, mind, and body now. Amen. And so, now at this time, we're going to have our man of God, Pastor John. Everybody say amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Amen. If you're excited about the Lord, come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're excited about the Lord, why don't you make some noise? All right, praise God. Amen, amen. Truly, God is good. Uh, go ahead and uh, grab your Bible. Amen. Thank God for the spirit of prayer. Amen. Amen. It's good to be able to come into the house of the Lord and cry out from the depth of your heart. In the Bible, in your Bible, turn to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Amen. I just believe somebody's on the verge of breakthrough. Okay, a couple folks don't get it. <laughs> 
in uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Are you there? Amen. It says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Why don't you underscore repentance from dead works? Amen. And of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Father, we thank you for your word. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us tonight. And Father, we'll be so ever careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You may have your seat in the presence of our life changing King. How many of you know it's all about Him? Amen. It is all about Him. And as customary, we thank God for all those who are watching by live stream. We thank God for each and every one of you. We love you. Come on, OIC. Put your hands together for our listening audience. We love you. And we're praying God's choices blessing over your life. Somebody say amen. Amen. Truly, we give honor to Pastor Pat and her absence. We love you, Pastor Pat, and yet pray. Amen. Yes, yes, it's going to be all right. Amen. All right, what time is it? Quiz time, review time. <laughs> Amen. Let's get started in our review. We got a powerful lesson tonight, and we can't waste no time. All right, question number one. Those who are listening, get your, get your fingers ready. Type in your answers. We want to we wanna hear from you. Amen? All right, question number one. The plot, ploy, and plan of the devil is to disrupt and destroy the sanctity and institution of Christ. Fill in the blank. We mentioned it Sunday. The plot, ploy, and plan of the devil is to disrupt and destroy the sanctity and institution of life. Okay, we got to keep moving. I hope everybody's typing. Amen. Anybody? Marriage, all right. Everybody's at the top of the class right now. Marriage, uh-huh. All right. All right, let's go to question number two. You got to think fast tight there. What are the two sources mankind is given by which we choose to live by? It was mentioned Sunday. What are the two sources mankind is given by which we choose to live by? All right, answer anybody. God or the devil. All right, come on. I will also accept Satan if you uh, you say Satan. <laughs> All right, come on, we moving, we moving. Are we getting any uh, answers? Come on, Sister Chambers, come on, y'all. She's trying to move to the uh, top of the class on the outside. We thank God for you, Sister Chambers. <laughs> All right, fill in the blank. Question number three. A blank is only as strong as its foundation. A blank is only as strong as its foundation. We mentioned this Sunday. All right, anybody type it. A blank is only as strong as its foundation. All right, uh, the answer would be nation. A nation is only as strong as its foundation. Come on, Sister Chambers. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Build it. I'll, I'll take that, too. But you got to shout it out as well. All right. Question number four. True or false? The law was not made for a righteous man. True or false? 
Amen. We got the baby answer. Come on. The law was not made for a righteous man, true or false. All right, anybody type it. All right, anybody here? True. Amen. It was made for the lawless, the unrighteous. Amen. If you righteous and breaking the law, we need to talk. <laughs> all right, Sunday. Uh, all right, let's do this. Number five. In Sunday's message, what happens happens when God removes uh, from our home? When God is removed from our home? Our society, our workplaces, and sometimes even our church. What happens when God is taken out of the picture? When God is removed from our common areas, the churches, society, our homes, our families. What did we say Sunday? Anybody type it? That was a long one. All right, Deacon and uh, Minister Siobhan is tied. They try to move to the top of the class. It uh, opens the door for Satan or the devil to infiltrate. Yes, yes, when God is removed. All right, let's go to question number six. What was the title of Sunday's message? And what was the scripture? Yes. Yes. What was the title of Sunday's message and what scripture did we come from Sunday? This Sunday. Anybody type it? All right, we got the move. Anybody type it? Anybody here? All right, and what was the scripture? All right, all of y'all things kind of got there. <laughs> okay, all right, number seven, true or false? To reject God's word and his teaching, which is the doctrine of Christ, is to reject Jesus Christ himself, true or false? To reject God's word and his teaching the doctrine of Christ is to reject Jesus Christ himself. Is that true or false? Anybody type it? All right. Anybody here? True. Y'all are on point tonight. True. That was true. Fill in the blank. Question eight. Where there is no law, there is no blank and no blank. <laughs> Where there is no law, we said this Sunday, it was up on the screen, I do believe. There is no blank and no blank. Fill in the blank. Anybody type it? All right, anybody here? Oh, Sister Samuel, come on, she's at the top of the class. Amen. I think she was there last week, y'all. Y'all better, better hurry up now. Question nine. What was David, King David's response to what can the righteous do? What was his personal response? What did he complain King David proclaimed it was in the first verse it's in Psalm 11 and 1. <laughs> Not everybody looking. <laughs> Anybody type an answer? All right. <laughs> All right, we move in. He says, I will put my trust in the Lord. Yes. Do y'all remember us making that declaration? I will trust in the Lord. Amen. 
when he asked, when the question was asked, what can the righteous do? David says, I'm not going to flee as a bird to the mountain. I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. Here's the last one. All right. Name two of at least, uh, name one or two of the actions of what we should take in response to this question, what can the righteous do? I gave you about four of them. Name one or two of them. What can the righteous do? I know y'all got the right back in there. Anybody typing? Name one or two of the response where I said, what can the righteous do? Name one of them, anybody. All right. Trust in the Lord. Get back to calling the name. Pray and pursue an amen. Everybody get an A tonight. Get back to calling on the name of the Lord. Our hearts have been blessed as we have come to the end of our series foundation. Amen. And I pray that you have picked up something in your spirit that will help uh, help you on your journey as a believer. That you got to have the right foundation in order to survive the trials, the tests that come in your way, amen, as a believer. And our foundation must be Jesus Christ. And we're moving forward. Uh, in Hebrews, that sixth chapter says, leaving, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. We're going to park right there tonight talking about dead works won't work. Dead works won't work. The first principle of the doctrine of Christ is repentance from dead works. When you look at the word principles, it carries this meaning. It, it, it carries the meaning, the beginning of a thing. Amen. So when you see the word principles, you got to see where was this first mentioned? What, what is the beginning of this particular thing? And so when we say the first principle of the doctrine of Christ for every new convert, this is where they should start. Amen. Learning about repentance and from dead works. Amen. When you look at the word doctrine here in this setting, it's the Greek word logos. How many of you heard of that word, logos? The Greek word for uh, doctrine, uh, logos, is the meaning of doctrine, uh, doctrine of Christ. Amen. So the doctrine of Christ, you got to catch this, is the basic elementary teachings of the Christian life, amen, whereby we must move forward, growing into maturity. Uh, so you start, the new, the new day, the new converse starts at the doctrine of Christ. It's the elementary, the ABCs, the one, two, three of the Christian life. And the first thing a new convert has to know is that I got to leave my worldly works behind, and I got to do that by repenting of my sins. Amen. So, in other words, the doctrine of Christ is the foundation each new convert to know in order to mature as a Christian. And you will be surprised how many people have been in church a number of years and are not familiar with the doctrine of Christ. They know their church doctrine. They know the rules about the church they go to. But when you mention what are the six principles of the doctrine of Christ, many people get hung up. But here we want to teach you that the foundation that you must build upon is Jesus Christ and his doctrine. Amen. Because remember, we have told you there are many voices, there are many doctrines, doctrines of demons. And when you don't know the doctrine of Christ, you are subject to be tossed with every wind of doctrine. It's going to sound right, it's going to have a certain flair to it. But if you got, you got to know the doctrine of Christ. Well, Pastor John, why 
is that so important? Because just as a new babe has to have milk in order to uh, develop and be nursed, that's where the doctrine of Christ is the milk. You got to get this. It's the milk of God's word. Amen. Don't try to start no new convert on meat, strong meat, tough meat. You don't have any teeth. He, he can't digest. His system's not ready for it. So you got to start with the elementary things of the teachings of Christ. Uh, this, this is where we get the proper nourishment. We need to grow and develop in God because all of the other teachers spring forth out of and away from the doctrine of Christ. Are you getting this? Amen. And so uh, last month or so, we spent the whole month, month teaching about repentance. Y'all remember that? Brokenness and submission uh, to God. And everything, you got to get this too, everything in God must start with repentance. Hallelujah. Everything, your Christian life starts with you saying, God, forgive me of my sins. Not, Lord, what can you give me, Lord? Uh, where's my uh, this and that? No, it starts with, God, I'm repentant. I'm godly sorrow. For my sins, you can find that in Second Corinthians, the seventh chapter, and verse ten. It says, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance." And we found out that Greek word is metanoia. Y'all remember that, huh? Amen. And so, uh, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repentant of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. And so what is repenting? Repenting is turning to God for forgiveness and accepting His righteousness. You got to remember that it's turning to God. It's not just turning away uh, from sin, but you got to turn to Him, the one who is able to forgive sin, and we accept His. Righteousness, God. Because, see, when, what happens when we truly repent? Listen, uh, this kind of teaching, you got to be able to teach other people. So you got to get it. This is class 101. Amen. You got to be able to teach somebody else. What happens when we truly repent? Repentance produces a change of mind. Uh, not only that, it changes the direction of our life. So you got change of mind, change of direction in life, and we begin to have a different belief system. Amen. As it relates to God. So three things begin to happen in our lives. We got to have a change of mind. Y'all have heard in the church, if you've been in the church any length of time, the mind I used to have, I don't have anymore. The places I used to go, I just don't go anymore. Amen. And in our direction of life, God turns our life around so that we can focus on Him. It's not the 360, y'all remember this. It's not the 360, it's the 180. Amen. We're turning our back on sin and turning our face to God so that we can focus on Him. Amen. And so tonight, we're talking about repentance from Dead word. This is not just for a select group of people. Every person that repentance is for everyone, everybody. Amen. And tonight we're talking about dead work won't work. Hallelujah. When you think about dead words, it's listed only twice in the New Testament. It's in Hebrews, the 6th chapter, verse 1, and in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 14. And both of them, when they speak, both of them, that is relating to dead words, both of unprofitable of deeds that must be repented of. And we're going to explain that tonight. In Hebrews, the ninth chapter, Verse 14, 
It says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge, which means cleanse, purge your conscience from dead words to serve the living God. And so it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that's able to cleanse our minds, purge our minds from dead works. Amen. Because why is this important? Because when you read in the book of Hebrews, when when the writer was addressing the Jewish people, the Jews they were they were they were committed to following God's law. They were committed to uh, the sacrifice, the, the, the sacrifice, and then keeping God's law. But they, when Jesus came, they couldn't break forth, break away from uh, the people of the law and accepting Jesus Christ because uh, I'm here to tell somebody, how many of you know that animals can never forgive sin? I don't care how many goats, how many turtle doves, or what the bulls that you uh, sacrifice, they were not able, and still not able, to forgive sin. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so not only that, they were uh, strictly, they wanted the front of the law to the letter. But how many of you know the law could not forgive sin? Amen. And when when uh, the word was coming forward, when Jesus was trying to tell them, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, they couldn't distinguish. What are you talking? We're keeping the law. We're doing this. It. It's all of works about works. And Jesus was trying to say, it's not about works no more. It's about repentance, giving your life to Christ. Amen. Because good works prevent true repentance. Did you get that? Dead works prevent true repentance. And here in Galatians 2 and 21, it says, Apostle Paul is saying, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, listen to this, then Christ is dead in vain. And when you dissect and, and, and research the frustration of the God, uh, grace of God, that means to disesteem it, to set it aside, to disannul it, to reject it. And in exchange, I would rather hold on to my own works of righteousness. I, I know how to do this. And uh, when you frustrate the grace of God, you are committing yourself to good works. Because how many of you know you cannot do anything good enough to work for your salvation? Hallelujah. That's why Jesus had to come on the scene and shed his blood. Titus 3, 5, and 6 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. My God, somebody can relate to that? Amen. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And so we are saved by grace. Somebody shout grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, grace through faith. And uh, where can I find that? I'm glad you asked. In uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Did y'all see that? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. You cannot work for your salvation. Amen. No matter uh, how you try to get involved with all of the, the good things that you believe is out there, you cannot work for your salvation. Amen. You can only see this uh, when you're trying to work for your salvation. That is called dead work. Amen. You cannot rely on any type of work to take the place of repenting before. God. 
amen. And some people are trying to get involved in all things. Well, I'm a good person. Good has one too many. Uh, <laughs> I've known to say zeros, but has one too many O's. And uh, you still, no matter what you get involved, you still need to repent before God. Well, in uh, Luke, the 18th chapter, and I'm moving fast, I know, because I know y'all worked all day and found a body car to get ready to step down, so I got to move quickly. In Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 9 through 14, when you read that parable, it's the parable of the Pharisee and the publican. I believe one time I was teaching a Bible study, and my word got twisted up, and I said the Republican. <laughs> Amen. But it is the Pharisee and the publican. Well, let's see what happened. The Pharisee trusted his own righteousness. Let me read that. Amen. It's up there. Amen. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee, you got to catch this, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Y'all hear that? Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as the publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And uh, all right, so in that with the Pharisee, do you see all the eyes? I'm doing this. I'm working. I'm 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 not like them. You can never compare yourself to anybody else because nobody else can save you. Nobody else can forgive you of your sins but Jesus Christ. So he was just making a lot of words thinking that his dead work was going to impress God for his salvation. So uh, he, 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 he was missing the mark. And let's see what the publican did. And the publican, standing afar off, uh, would not so much as lift up his eyes so much as his eyes unto heaven. Amen. He smote upon his breast, said, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, you sit there and you decide which prayer do you think God honored? The one that was caught up in dead work and self-righteousness or the one who just was down. Look, I, I don't, I'm not even worried to look, look up at, at him because I'm so unworthy. God, whatever I, I have come to understand, but one thing I'm asking, God, have mercy on me as a sinner. I don't know if you've prayed that prayer before, but my God, when you ask God for mercy, hallelujah. God comes through for you. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. God is not concerned about what fraternities you belong to and organizations and societies that you belong to. They are considered dead works. Somebody shout dead works. Dead works do not equate with self-effort. Uh, and the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you attempt to obtain righteousness your own way, you got to catch this. You reject Jesus Christ. You're saying, God, I can figure this out on my own. I can do what I want my way. And how many know that that won't work? Dead works will not work. And we're still coming from repentance from dead works. Amen. No matter what you involved in, if you have not repented before God, it is still and it will always be dead works. You can't clean your own life up. How many have talked to a family or a member or a friend and they say, oh yeah, I'm coming as soon as I stop smoking. Oh, I'm coming. I'm, I'm waiting till I stop drinking. Because they're still thinking about dead works. They're 
still wrapped up. You, can, you don't have the power to uh, sustain and stay away from sin. Only the power of Jesus Christ is able to break that curse, the power of sin off of our life. You can't straighten out your own life without coming to God first. Amen. We must come to God and repent from dead works. And this list, here's the second part, and accept His grace. Hallelujah. I want to have one somebody under the sound of my voice that can remember how God's grace changed your life. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I thank God every day. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, we, none of us, would be sitting here. Amen. It's by God's grace. Amen. So we must repent of our sins. Amen. Dead works won't work, and I'm, I'm done. You know, there are people all over the world, all over the world, that is, they try to get involved. They say, I'm going to donate to this society. I'm going to donate to that because of guilt and sin. And they try to say, as long as I'm doing this, uh, I, this is how I'm dealing with the curse of sin over my life. And they think that they're sending up sacrifices to God uh, uh, by trying to do good works. Or, and, and, and all of it did work without repenting. And we as believers have to get the word out. Come on. Now just come as you are. Come on, come in. Let God clean you out. Because, see, when man tries to clean you up, man says, hey, just, you can't wear that. You can't go in. See, that's man-made. But when God does it, oh, my God, he does it from the inside out. Amen. Uh, it's no matter what you look like uh, when you try to, uh, you come in one way, but you leave out your heart. That to be changed. And when the inside is right, it, then your outside will automatically begin to line up. That's why when somebody comes in from the street as they are, you have the choice. We don't put them out. If the pastor got a problem with what you got on, it's the pastor's problem. Uh oh. I'm like, yeah, uh, 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 uh. I don't have my amen going in here tonight, so I got, I got to fix for myself tonight. Amen. But they come, you understand? People from the, the world got to come in. They got to experience the love and the forgiving power. And I've heard testimony after testimony. When somebody came in, they were already feeling the guilt and the shame. And why would the sanctified person make them feel even the worse? Sister Salisbury can tell you a testimony. When we were in our first six months of marriage, Coming from the sanctified church, and the, the way our situation was set up, she went to church. <laughs> she went to church with a sleeveless dress in a sanctified church. Did y'all get that sleeveless armpit out and sanctified? That don't happen. <laughs> and before she before she can get good into the service. We had little sister Siobhan. <laughs> she was around. <laughs> Before she could get in the service, I forgot that that's 41 years ago. Some mother came with a big seat. Not only did she come with a big seat, she was like, you know, we don't dress like that here. Now, if, if, Sister Salisbury was looking to give her life to Christ that day. How many times she was? Don't she know she could have been? Don't she know she could have been hindered and scarred for life? And we have done that so many times for many people who have come in. Their language is not like ours. Their grace is not like ours, but we we get so caught up. Oh, you don't look, you don't smell, you don't uh, you sit back, you don't stand up, you don't do nothing. And sometimes we go and get the church, the, the seat. Now, if you feel it, now is a good time to repent. I got mighty quiet, so I'm like, maybe you were one of the ones that said I did that to somebody. Tonight, God is bringing it back to your, your remembrance. You need to repent. Find that person 
I pray that they're saved and sanctified now. But I came to tell somebody, my time is that dead works lead to death. Dead works leads to eternal separation from God. And I don't know about you, but now is not the time to be eternally separated uh, from God. Now is not the time to be on the road that leads to death. Amen. Uh, and, and I came to tell somebody, don't believe all the hype that the devil is baiting you with. Uh, it looks good on the other side. You heard that saying, it's always greener. The grass looks greener on the other side. That's, that's not true always. Don't fall for it. Go with God. You won't lose with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. We do not work for our salvation because Jesus Christ has finished the work on the cross already. Amen. Repent it from dead works. Amen. That's the first principle of the doctrine of Christ. See, repentance from dead works, it reveals that you have the revelation of what Jesus Christ came to do. Uh, he came to deliver me and to set me free from the yoke of sin. Hence, my eyes closed. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you, God, that you have given us revelation of who you are. Oh, God, repentance from dead works. Oh, God, not trying to work for our salvation, but, Father, we freely accept the gift of grace. Oh, God, grace that covers our lives. Oh, God, hallelujah, we accept your righteousness in our lives. God, I pray for that man, that woman, that boy or girl that is saying, I want Jesus Christ. I want to repent from dead works. Father, we receive them with open arms tonight, God, as they come in as they are. Father, we pray that they won't leave the same way that they came. Strengthen us for this week to come, oh God. Give us power, God. Give us authority over what we're dealing with, oh God. And we'll walk in the victory that you have already provided. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. God is good. Dead works won't work. That's to our benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Raise your hands, Father, give us strength. God, to finish out this week in power and victory. Help us to witness to somebody who does not know you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Be blessed. High five somebody in the spirit.